Baroque artistic style was born in Rome and involved all the aspects of life including painting, sculpture, architecture, literature, theater and music. Its peculiar elements are the originality, the fantasy, the irregularity, the rich decoration, and circular forms and movement. Piazza Navona is a Baroque showcase, with several masterpieces by the great protagonists of the time. Hello welcome to my channel, in this video we will have a historical tour of Piazza Navona. Piazza Navona is a magnificent Baroque stage, and probably the most charming piazza of Rome, it boasts great works including Bernini's Fountain of the Four Rivers and the Pamphili Palace. Piazza Navona occupies the track of the ancient stadium of Domitian, or Circus Agonalis, of which it has perfectly preserved the elongated rectangular shape of the arena. Built by the Emperor Domitian before 86 AD, the stadium was used for competitions and performances. Some remains of the imposing buildings are still visible in the underground rooms of the Church of St. Agnesa in Agone. Three fountains decorate the square, the Fontana del Moro, so called for the statue of the Ethiopian fighting with a dolphin, the Fountain of the Rivers, one of Bernini's most beautiful and imaginative works and the Fontana de Calderari, also known as the Fountain of Neptune. The Fontana del Moro The Fontana del Moro, made of ancient marble, is the oldest of the three fountains and is located in the south end of Piazza Navona. A colossal seaman stands out against a huge shell as he wrestles with a dolphin. Based on an original design by Bernini, the work was sculpted in 1654 by the master Ludovico Rossi of Fiesole. The masks and sculptures of the Tritons are copies of the originals visible today in the gardens of Villa Borghese. The Fountain of Neptune The Fountain of Neptune is a monumental complex at the northern end of Piazza Navona. Made of pink Porta Santa marble and designed in 1574 by Giacomo della Porta together with the Fontana del Moro, it had the aim of obtaining a shape similar to the two fountains with tritons and large masks. The work commissioned by Pope Gregory XIII was never completed and for about 300 years the fountain remained without sculptures. Only in the 19th century in the center of the fountain it was possible to admire the water god Neptune, by Antonio della Bitta, depicted with his trident fighting a large octopus. The other sculptures, which were created by Gregorio Zappola, illustrate two seahorses, mermaids and cupids playing with dolphins. We regularly offer free tours around historical centers around Europe. So, make sure to subscribe to my channel to be informed about upcoming free tours. Let us know in the comments which European town or city are you planning to visit. This will help us see the interest to create more free tours for you. Also check out the description below for special offers. The Fountain of the Four Rivers The Fountain of the Four Rivers is the largest of the three fountains in Piazza Navona. The scenographic work, in the center of the square, was built by John Lorenzo Bernini between 1647 and 1651. The giants in white marble, placed on a travertine base are nude sculptures representing the allegories of the great rivers of the four continents known at that time. The Nile, the Ganges, the Danube and the Rio de la Plata. Naturally the fountain was to celebrate the papal power in the world, highlighted by the four great rivers. The Ganges, the sacred river, is personified by a solemn bearded figure holding an oar in his hand. The Rio de la Plata is represented by a character who raises an arm to symbolize the colonization of the recently subdued American continent. This is its sources still unknown at that time. The lion and the palm are the emblem of the African continent. The Danube symbolizes Europe with a coiled figure, facing a horse.
The water that flows between the masses of travertine, infuses a suggestive movement because it gushes from a single source. As prominent component as the sculptures, the water from the rocks pours in its impetuous crescendo among wild animals, palms, peonies, agaves and climbing plants, creating an extraordinary effect. The sculptural prodigy arouses admiration and amazement in the viewer by involving him in a universe of timeless perfection and beauty. Initially Pope Innocent X entrusted the project to Borromini but Bernini, thanks to the favors of the Pope's powerful mother-in-law, Nana Olympia, brought a silver model of the fountain. The pontiff was so impressed by the beauty of the artifact that he gave up on Borromini's project, passing the task of the work to Bernini. In 1651 Pope Innocent X had just completed the construction of the imposing palace for the family in Piazza Navona and wanted to construct a new church in place of the ancient church of Sant'Agnese adjacent to his palace. In fact the church is a sort of chapel to the palace, there is an opening near the dome where the family could attend the religious ceremonies without leaving the palace. The task was entrusted to the architect Girolamo Ranaldi and his son Carlo Ranaldi with its chapel. In 1653 the Rinaldis were substituted by Borromini. Francesco Borromini had to make adjustments on the original plan, he positioned columns towards the edges of the dome piers as in his other churches, creating a broad basis for the pendentives of the dome. The magnificent concave facade of the church had new curved steps descending to the piazza, they harmoniously play against the concave curvature of the facade, which was to have eight columns and a broken pediment, the flanking towers were designed at single story, above which there was an arrangement of columns, niches and convex bays, in a style characteristic of Bormini. Sant'Agnes in Athon, a splendid Baroque building, its harmony and extravagance glowing in the Roman sun surely make this one of the greatest architectural masterpieces of the world. Bernini, during the period of refurbishment of Piazza Navona had faken out of favor following the collapse of the facade of St. Peter's Vatican. On the other hand Borromini was chosen by Innocent X himself for the design of the new piazza. Borromini, to respond to Bernini's provocations, according to the popular tale, he made the statue of Sant'Agnese, at the base of the bell tower on the right, with her hand on the chest, to reassure passers-by that it is impossible that the facade will collapse, and his face turned to the side, as a sign of contempt for the fountain of the four rivers designed by the rival Bernini. The story behind the two main monuments of Piazza Navona is not historically proven. That there was some competition between Bernini and Borromini has been documented several times, but Bernini completed the fountain between 1648 and 1651, before work on the church of Sant'Agnese in Agon began in 1652. The appearance of the statues of the rivers is symbolic with respect to the origins and history of the places. The Nile, for example, its face is covered in reference to the darkness of its sources, which remained unknown until the end of the 19th century. However, both monuments of Piazza Navona represent the perfect fusion of architecture and sculpture, expression of the movement, and emblem of Baroque in Rome. To get to Piazza Navona is very easy if you are in Rome. Arriving by train to Termini Station, you can reach Piazza Navona by taxi or public transport, thus lines 40 or 64 stop near Piazza Navona, Piazza della Chiesa Nuova, continue on foot for 300 meters and you will reach the square. Have you been to Rome? Do you plan to visit Rome? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Thanks for watching. See you in my next video. Bye bye for now.